The DLP is 69 years old and it has a, a, a structure. There is a there there's hierarchy and there there there's structure. There's order, right? There is order in um in the in 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 the DLP. It's not something that just started last week. And for those of you who are thinking that somehow this happened, it's going to destroy the. You, you, let's begin to understand. You know that this did not just. It's not a party that started two years ago or four years ago. Yeah. Huh? It, it it's not something that started um you know uh, ten years ago. Over sixty nine years ago, and there there's a structure in place. And so let's look at the structure of the DLP. And I deliberately didn't want um, anybody from the DLP to be on, um, you know, here tonight, right? We, I just wanted just citizens like myself because I'm not a member of the DLP, but I wanted citizens um, to come on. Rose just says that, you know, that just told us that, um, you know, she's not a member of the DLP. Um, um, Apostle. Breed is not a member of the DLP, right? But I want us want us to 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 look at what look at the structure of the DLP and look at what has happened. Let's look at what has happened with these two um, gentlemen. There is the annual conference, and that is that is the, that is the highest. Right, the, 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 that, that annual conference, it's, it's the members, right? Let me just look at, um, get to my notes here because I don't want to say, um, to be saying the wrong thing, right? So for those of you who don't understand, thinking that people, they just got up and did a kangaroo kind of a thing and, and got rid of people, there's a structure um, that is in the, that is a structure in the party. Right, so we have the annual council that we, um, that those are the members of the party. Right, all the members. That's so they, they're at the top. Right, then you have the general council. The general council is the highest decision making body outside of the annual conference. So let me let you see this a little clearer. Look at it. This is a general council. This is not, so you need to understand, this is not a, a fly-by-night organization. Right? See? So this, the general council is the highest decision-making body outside of the annual conference. And it is made up of the members. The members are the former parliamentarians, so... Anybody who was a parliamentarian, okay, make up the general council. There are two representatives from each branch. So try to imagine or everybody who you've ever seen who was a parliamentarian, they're alive, they're part of the general council. Then there are two representatives from each branch. There are former candidates that contested the last election. So those candidates that contested the last election would make up the general council as well. Try to remember this because we're going to go back there, go back to this. Persons elected from annual conference. So there are persons that are elected from the annual conference and they form, they are also part of the general council. As again, as I said, remember that, okay? Because it is this general council, it's this general council that met last night. So bear that in mind. As I said, it's not fly by night. And my understanding is that the decision to remove these two men from the party was unanimous. Listen to who make it up. Former parliamentarians, two reps from each branch, persons elected from the annual conference, former candidates that contested the last election. 
not a fly-by-night organization. It has a constitution. This structure comes out of the constitution of the Democratic Labour Party. Then there is the Executive Council. The Executive Council, look at who is in there. You have the officers elected at the annual conference. So remember, the annual conference is coming up next weekend, I'm told. Okay? So let's look at the Executive Council. Officers elected at the annual conference. Okay? So all the officers that were elected at the annual conference, and so that would be, um, you know, um, like your um, your president, and you have your, your first vice president, second vice president, et cetera, et cetera, the secretary general and general secretary, I need to say that, general secretary. Then you have the co-opted members by um, general by the general secretary and president. So the general secretary and the president, they have the power to bring, um, you know, to, to get some members to be, um, you know, be part of the executive council. Because I hear a lot of people there discussing this thing, but I don't think that the average Barbadian understands the workings, the inner workings of the Democratic Labour Party, and that it is a structured organization. Like some, some, you know, a lot of third parties start they, they start today and they they gone tomorrow. This is going sixty nine years, people. And I, when I did the the, the film on Barrow. On Errol Barra, it was so interesting to do um, just just a study of the party and to understand how it works. And this party would have seen all kinds of issues, right? There was a Clyde Mask call when he left, and I mean, come on, people, come on! This is a strong party. This is strong. The history. I am talking for about the history of the party and the organs of the party not fly by night you hear i tell you okay so the executive council is um and then they have persons elected from the general um elected from the general council okay and they make up the executive council and so that is the council that ronnie and steve that they would have been in the executive council but did you hear what I said the Constitution says? What is the highest decision-making body outside of the annual conference? What is it? We're in class. Write it for me in the comment section. Because a lot of people, some people don't want to learn anything. You don't want to hear anything. You just want to go along with what is, you know, gossip and what. You know. Let's stick to facts and let's stick to what is. Huh? What is the highest decision-making body outside of the annual conference? I'm not going to answer until you put it in. I'm, be, I'm being like um, uh, Rose Corbin. I'm a teacher tonight. Okay? Then there is what is called the disciplinary committee. The disciplinary committee elected by the general counsel. And I'm gonna to say to people, we can we can um, disagree, but we're gonna we're gonna um, you know the the kind of name calling and 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 what we're doing to people in the comment section, um, guys. I'm warning you, and then um, those that are doing it, I'm gonna remove you. Okay, good. The disciplinary committee is elected by the general council. All right. And I see Apostle Canterbury, and I, and, and I know he's listening, and he's a man of order. He will understand how these things work. The disciplinary committee is elected by the general council. Okay? And the chairman from the disciplinary committee must be from the executive council. So the chairman, who was Apostle um, Apostle, um, uh, help me guys, Apostle Durant was part of this, the executive council. That's how come he was the chairman. So he came from the executive council. So they elected him from, and he came from there. 
members of the disciplinary committee can be any member of the party. So there are other members that make up this disciplinary committee. All right. Now, what we good night, um, good night, Apostles Canterbury. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you again for inviting me to be on your show. How are you doing tonight? I am fantastic. I'm in a teaching mode, and I and I'm drawing <laughs> you. I'm drawing you in before you make your commentary. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, no, um, Apostle, what we're talking about is this organization, this this um, political organization, one of the oldest in the Caribbean, um, that has been in existence for 69 years. And there are some people who believe that um, if it's not going there, that their way, they're gonna, they believe they can throw a little match in it and, and burn it down, basically, is what. <laughs> what I, I see that is happening. Actually, I gave the analogy at the beginning. I'll say this to you before I go back to my little my little um, slide here um, about Solomon. Remember King Solomon when the mother, there were two mothers and they were quarreling over a baby and one was, they were each saying the baby was theirs, right? That's right. That's right. And yes. And, and they were, they were all crying. They want this baby. They want this baby. And until King Solomon, King Solomon says, all right, he was the wisest man. He decided, um, he decided he's going to take the, the, the sword and he was going to cut the baby in two. That's correct. And, and the mother, the mother, um, one of them said, go ahead and cut the baby, you know, kill, go cut the baby in two, kill the baby. But the real mother said, no. The real That's mother true. preferred for that the baby to be given to the other woman. Mm -hmm. And I started off earlier talking about the hearts of people. Where is where you know what where, what where's your what, what are you what, were you really part of it? If your desire is to destroy it, right? right. right. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 it's 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 good, Monica. Monica is saying thanks for educating those who don't know. All right. Correct. Very good. And and I think this education is important because they need to understand what happened last night, and that this is not a kangaroo court. It's not something that they came up with and 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 just did. It's part of the constitution. They followed Correct. the constitution of the party, right? So this disciplinary committee, um, Apostle Scantiberry, received uh received complaints from members about these two gentlemen, the president and the general secretary. And my research told me, as I said, I, I, um, I didn't ask anybody from the DLP to be on the show because I wanted to do my own research. Okay? Very good. Very good. My research showed me, um, Apostle, and okay, Mrs. Corbin is still there, that they were invited by the disciplinary committee to come to a meeting to come to a hearing right because of how the, what the constitution and they have to date i'm going to my notes so that i don't make up any stories neither of these two gentlemen attended any of the meetings that were called by the disciplinary committee who elects the disciplinary committee? The general council. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the general council, okay. They are actually the highest, the, uh, um, um, down from the annual council, they're, they are the highest body, decision making sure. body. But yeah. these two gentlemen decided that they would not attend any of the three meetings there was no correspondence based on my research and my number is two three six seven thousand if if my research is wrong send me a message and prove it right apostle they yes, attended none of the three meetings these are leaders none of the three meetings right they did not send any correspondence they were given that opportunity they were written and the case of what was you know what what it was against them was sent to them there was no nothing written 
nothing to say they can't attend the meeting because of a b c d i was told that sometimes what they did the goodly pastor apostle who is a, a, a man of integrity apostle durant david durant my research told me that sometimes he would be there waiting 40 minutes before he starts that meeting hoping that they would come Apostle Durant, who who are very close to um to Steve Blackett, Steve Blackett was even um attending his church, and so he waited as a man of integrity, trying and a man of peace and order. Wow, huh? that's interesting. And, and no, they did not. They did not turn up. Forty minutes they waited at these meetings for them to come did not turn turn up yeah and according they followed the constitution of the party so nobody pushed them out nobody pushed them out you have decided to defy the here, here it is the general council put the disciplinary committee together and these two gentlemen decided and you could cuss me all you want right you could cuss me all they want all you want it is what unless you can prove that this is not fact you could continue but they have chosen and I'm not even on air going to go through the the um, the complaints. I'm not going to do that. Okay. But to also say that these same goodly gentlemen you see here on here, they were also inside of the party planning how to bring the party down. How can you be part of something like that? And you are you are you are now also my research. And if I'm wrong, two, three, six, seven thousand. I deliberately brought no DLP on here because I want I did my own research. Do you understand? And they, um, apostle, inside of first of all, they call unlawful meetings. Right? unlawful meetings were called and they decided based on my research there were talks about starting a new party well wow. interesting how on earth would the constitution allow this kind of behavior let's let's be real people They disrespected the general council. And therefore, last and the disciplinary committee wasted the people's time. On top of that, put on top of that, and I'm going to say this here, and I won't say all the details, what people don't understand, Apostle the things that they the, that that disciplinary committee had to go through my research again told me there were people that even sent um um death threats to them oh. and i'm doing this tonight the reason i'm doing this i started off asking my barbadian people do you want a one party state is that what you want don't you see the writing on the wall don't you see that there is an answer other things that are operating trying to give us a one party state a one a, a, a one party structure in this country yeah and I want anybody who runs an organization, you have, you're calling a meeting, you dress up, take your time in your gas, waste your gas and go down to a meeting, okay? 
and these two men and you can come for me come for me <laughs> two three six seven thousand if i'm telling lies send it and prove it send it who would stand up for that how can the party go on with that kind of indiscipline and disrespect so i wanted to share that with the people of barbados dave can you show the the hierarchy and organizational structure again please right very good and just make it smaller so people um right and i uh, uh, make it so they can see how it is it's not a, um apostles canterbury this is not a fly by night organization and so to those people who are saying that it's only trouble it can all, only be trouble if they had not gone by the constitution of the party there is no trouble there is no trouble this is it here in another this note shows a relationship yeah this is now showing the relationship it's simple why can't you follow why if you're going to be a leader what why you you're above discipline you're above somebody has a complaint and they have no recourse they can't go then you can't sit down to hear and let let the evidence come out and let there be discussion and a hearing that's all they were asking for a hearing and they have written to them and three times faster and they never showed up never showed up i know sir uh thank you for joining and i know you have been um hearing all that is happening i don't know if you knew all of this structure um that's in the in the party um but i i want to hear your thoughts on what has happened do you think that now, now that this is trouble for the party the party will be destroyed you know what what are your thoughts well um you know again thank you so much for having me uh with you again um i don't agree with the concept that this is going to destroy the party um my position on on this and, and really looking at what is happening is that at this time the the party is in a stage of rebuilding okay and um the interest of mr thorne into the democratic labor party uh it, it radically changed the demographic of the party and uh, of course based on their laws from what i understand uh if you have an elected sitting member uh of that party in parliament then that person immediately becomes the political leader of the party okay and um by their laws that's what mr thorne actually became so it should not have been uh an issue it should not have been a question of kicking someone out to become the leader of the party uh, the laws clearly states how the party is run and the party is a democratic labor party i had the opportunity years ago to speak to my cousin who is now uh, past, uh, Dr. Waldo Ramsey. Uh, we had uh, numerous discussions on uh, the mind of uh, Errol Barrow in terms of even creating the Democratic Labour Party because he realized that in Barbados, under the Barbados Labour Party, there was no democracy. It was, again, um, a party not of the people, but a party of the plantocracy. Uh, and, and it continues to be that way today. But uh, in order to offer the people a, a system of democracy and to bring individuals, especially Barbados and those who are marginalized through the whole sugar industry uh, and um, all of these elements, um, uh, the right uh, honorable uh, Errol Bauer wanted to have uh, a party that was of the people and for the people, you know, over the years, um, it is you know played a very significant role in the development of barbados so i don't think that this is going to hurt the party i think this is going to bring uh much much 
healing, faster healing. I think this is going to put the party on a, a different way of length and a different threshold uh, where they can actually move forward into what they need to do leading up to the next general election. Um, and uh, Madam Weeks, we have to understand that uh, when it comes to the political element and uh, being a person uh, you know, that understands the Bible, there comes a time when you have to make the tough decisions. And um, Mr. Thorne, uh, being who he is and being the leader of the opposition right now, his place even in parliament has allowed the Thanks public so of Barbados to this know all of yeah. the ills and a lot of the things that could have been easily um, you know, brought into law in Barbados that the public would never have known about. So uh, when we are, uh, you know, talking and saying, um, you know, things that are, you know, discrediting him, uh, his presence there and then his two senators have allowed Barbadians to be on uh, and be in the knowing of a lot of the things that we probably would not have known about. The uh, crime prevention bill, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the bill in relation to, uh, you know, bail. Uh, all of these different things, the issues of corruption. I, I mean, seriously, uh, as Barbadians, we need to be more focused on what is happening with our country rather than trying to divide uh, our nation into this and that party. So I think right now, uh, this tough decision that was made by the uh, the hierarchy of the Democratic Labour Party has actually put the, the party in a better position to move forward. Mm. I think uh, the 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 weeks and months where they've been uh, at a stalemate uh, where uh, these two gentlemen uh, are concerned and, and and I have I don't have anything against them I'm speaking from my position as as a spiritual leader and as an individual that understands order that it is critical to make those tough decisions especially if the Democratic Labour Party is going to present uh, a united front to the people of Barbados going into the next election. And I think um, this is a, a very good move. I'll tell you this um, on the backdrop of the reality of, let's say, for instance, in the Bible, let's take a look at Joseph. Um, the day that Joseph came out of prison uh, serving uh, an, uh, an attempted rape charge, mm. the day that he came out of prison and stood before Pharaoh, Pharaoh gave an executive order that he become the governor of Egypt. Now, obviously that would not have sat well with the political hierarchy in Egypt, but it was a tough decision to me. And uh, he said, can we find someone in whom the spirit of the God dwells yeah. that we can put over this matter of putting us ready for the seven years of plenty and then the seven years of famine. So uh, whether Barbadians um, are, are, are talking, and, and I know they are, because one of our problems as a people is that we don't take the time to get our information accurate. We don't take the time to look at the big picture. We don't take the time to see what the future is like. And, and evidently, if uh, Mr. Thorne and the executive body of the party, uh, if they're looking at the future of the party, if they're looking at uh, saying to Barbadians, well, we want to be a viable change um, of government leading into this upcoming election and uh, also taking Barbados into the future, then it is necessary to make those tough decisions. And uh, even though that it might not have sat well in Egypt with the selection mm -hmm. of Joseph, who was a Hebrew, to take over the political reins in, in Egypt, it worked out well. Okay, mm. it worked out well to the point that um, they, the whole world got saved by Joseph's ingenuity and his wisdom and his skill. Uh, his family got saved and, and, you know, Egypt got saved and it went on to become a, a, a global empire. And I, I think Mr. Thorne has, I think he has his head on. Okay, um, I've watched him, I've, 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 you know, paid very close attention to his um, his interviews uh, paid very close attention to uh, his his mannerism, his body language, even when he's speaking in Parliament. I think he has his head on. I think he knows where he's going. 
I think he knows where the party uh, needs to go. And I think that there are individuals within the party that are standing with him, even though they might not be visible, even though they may not say uh, that they are standing in support of him. But this decision has shown that within the Democratic Labour Party, within the executive body, there is unity because this was mm -hmm. a unanimous decision. So yes. I would not say that this is going to destroy the party. Rather, uh, looking at the future, I would say, um, you know, a fantastic move. Uh, I think this is going to bring the party closer together. I think this is going to bring the party uh, closer together faster, let me put it that way. And I think right now at this stage, they can actually begin the process of speeding forward into uh, letting the public see exactly who they are and what they have to bring to the uh, to the nation that says to Barbadians, hey, listen, we are ready. Uh, we have our people in place. We are ready to be uh, a viable and serious um, element of change uh, going forward for Barbados. So, I, you know, the person that I am, I would not see this as uh, anything that would destroy the party at all. I think this is actually a plus for the party. Yeah, you know that that's how I see it. I mean, I've I've been um, uh, running organizations, leading organizations, started organizations, and people like you and I, especially when you have volunteers, you know, people come. You know, apostles sometimes they come. You've had probably people take half of your members and they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, and 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 they go and start a church just down the road, or you know, or probably even start planning the church while you're in, like they were, these were doing, trying to plan a party while they were in the party. I mean, right. you know, all kinds of all kinds of things. I mean, and your church, like my organizations, have survived, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, you know, I am not. Um, maybe I should say this because. Um, one of the things that we must understand is that, um, like ministries, ministries are on different levels. Um, and uh, so I have, uh, with the help of my wife and with some of the ministers who were here uh, prior, who are no longer with us, and also with the ministers who are with me right now, we built World Harvest into a ministry that uh, hears from God. So I don't do anything unless i have heard from god now there are ministries that are designed for evangelism you know winning the loss you know getting people saved uh their ministries who are designed to help um enhance individuals and bring them into their calling and purpose um but one of the elements of world harvest ministries international is that uh we're called to do the ministry of of, of higher national salvation um and what this means is that um, we're designed to speak to the principalities and powers that governs Barbados. Uh, hence, you know, during COVID when I was speaking, I kept telling individuals, I am not saying this by myself. This is what I, 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 I took the time to pray um, with my wife. Uh, we asked the Lord, tell us about COVID. Explain to us, show us exactly what right COVID remember don't is. use that v word on here okay just letting you yeah. know i want to keep my channel for the people yeah. of barbados go ahead yes right and so i'm just saying this to help you understand that yes. when i speak i i speak from the position of the salvation of the nation the safety of the nation and if more people had listened to what the lord told me to say and and what i said to the nation then we could have saved more lives okay but this is what i need us to understand and i'm not um the kind of person i i'm not um you know political from the point of view of um for one party or for another i understand the role of politics in the island of barbados and i think right now with the the interest of uh mr thorne into the democratic labor party i think the Democratic Labour Party has a very serious future right now. I think Barbados has a very serious future. I've had the chance to speak with Mr. Thorne personally, uh, face to face, and it gave me an opportunity to uh, assess um, his his mental state, his his spiritual state, and um, he is a man that will listen and take advice and implement the advice for the betterment of 
the party and for the people of Barbados. So uh, I again, I, I just want to say this, that the time has come now to actually save Barbados. We have to make sure that Barbados has a future. I, I, I believe uh, very, very strongly that um, Mr. Thorne has a vision, which uh, I, I know for sure, and he's implementing that vision. It is not going to please everybody. Um, you know, not every decision that is made by a leader is going to sit well with everyone. There are people who are for you. There are people who are against you. There are people who are on the fence, uh, who need more information. They need more uh, elements to, to help them to believe, to help them to make up their minds as to where they're going to go. But um, as I said, I don't see this as uh, a problem for the party. I think out of it, you're going to see um, a, a very quick resurgence uh, of the party. I think in, in this move, you're going to see a lot more individuals um, who are stalwarts of the party and individuals who are, you know, real supporters of the party and even individuals who are fed up and tired of the type of leadership style that we've seen here so far. I think this is this is a pretty good move. And uh, we'll see in a, in a few days, in a few weeks, exactly uh, what it will turn itself into. But again, those who know, they know. And um, again, I, I, I think this is a very, very uh, strategic, strategic move by the party that is going to uh, yield benefits in the long run. Uh, thank you, Apostle. And you know what? One of the things that I, I really um, I, I admire when I started to do the research on, um, I spent a lot of time today digging in and yesterday and um, and I thought about um, our own Apostle David Durant, mm -hmm. you know, um, who some people are trying to crucify at this point. And this man is such a man of integrity. He has been a pastor in Barbados for so many years. He was a senator, you know, and um, and, and 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 for the DLP. And so he would have been, um, I suspect, part of the general council as well. And they chose him. He was appointed to be the chairman of the disciplinary committee. He was also, I think, part of the executive council. And, um, you know, with with that group where with, with, with that Ronnie was a part of. And, um, and so very open-minded, a fair person somebody of integrity. Dave and I know him very well. And, and what we're happy for, because, you know, sometimes we complain that the church is not involved, right? right, right but to right. see him leading this as another one apostle to another apostle, what would you want to say to David Duran tonight, sir? Well, at this time, um, you know, if I had the opportunity to speak with him, um, uh, first of all, I would tell him to stand his ground. Uh, and then uh, not only from the point of view of, um, you know, handling the situation primarily from the order of the, the executive um, body, but also as a man of God, as, as an apostle, um, the Bible reminds us that whosoever sins we, uh, we retain, they're retained to them. And whoever sins we forgive, they're forgiven. So uh, there's a place where um, apostolic, governance has to come into the reality of what's happening and i think it's is is very important um for him to stand his ground uh and not just function as a, a member of the executive body but also as as an apostle to speak as an apostle and it's very important for us to understand if a man of god is speaking and you have individuals uh such as these two gentlemen that are, are unwilling to even respond to a man of god who is inviting them to a meeting then uh, if, if we have this type of behavior at the adult level, at a leadership level, then what are we leaving for our young people to do? So this is something that I think um, that is very, very critical. And um, I, I would say to Apostle Jurek to make sure that he does everything that is within his power in this season to make sure that this situation is handled. If it is not handled properly, um, you know, within the reality of the disciplinary committee of the party then handle it as a man of god handle it yeah. by divine power it has to be handled at some point in time uh it has to be dealt with and if they're not open to uh you know the rules of the party then we handle it through the power of god and i'll tell you it's usually handled a lot faster 
when God gets involved. Yes. And that's why I'm so glad because I know that his church is praying about, uh, you know, dealing with this thing in prayer. And and um, Apostle Duant is dealing with it in prayer um, as well, because it's a, it is a also a, a spiritual matter. And I'm and I was very heartened to know that somebody with such, um, you know, high integrity, uh, you know, is leading the charge in that. And we can say, because sometimes I come on this show and I said, the church is not doing enough. And to see oh, an apostle out there, um, I have to I have to give that um, um, to him. Um, I yeah. see Paul Messiah has joined and anybody who wants to, if you would like to join to give your thoughts on what, have, what has happened, um, we have what, about three minutes. Um, I would, um, you know, you can come into the studio and do that if Dave could put up the link and to put the number again. And um, we are free to comment, um, uh, Mrs. Corbin and, um, and Apostle Scandor, just quick comment so that we can give um, those who are calling in as much time to speak as possible. So, um, um, Paul Messiah, thank you for joining. Good night. You're muted. Paul Messiah, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, right. yeah, I just on mute. Sorry. Yeah, a blessed good night to you and everyone. Good night. Good night, yes. Sir. What What are your thoughts on the um, the expulsion of these two um, 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 gentlemen from the DLP party? Is this? Do you think that this is a good uh, move for the party? Do you think it's good for Barbados um, at this time? I I believe it depends on how people are looking at it. You know because whenever decisions are made obviously um depending on who the persons are people are going to be too happy about the decisions but i believe change at times is necessary my my only issue is that when people um like refuse to accept change because change is necessary um i i made a couple notes i don't know I, I i would i would pray that i am um, people really understand where i'm coming from you know because i'm a builder and sometimes it is necessary to pull down things but pull down things with the knowledge that you're going to do some rebuilding nobody likes to pull down trust me but it is a necessary thing to do, especially if you're looking to rebuild and looking for change. That's right. uh, people must be mature enough to accept decisions that are not in their favor. And I believe that as we were talking tonight, you would know the measure of a man depending on how he accepts decisions. Because what I'm saying is that if you are a leader and you make decisions sometimes that go against people, when people make decisions that go against you, shouldn't you sit down like the other people that you expect to, uh, expect them to sit down? No, I, I have I have something to share here in in all fairness. And I'm, I'm saying, why did they refuse to attend the disciplinary committee to put forward their own case? Why are you asking the people to go against the decision that was made when you refuse to defend yourself? Because th this seemed like, like a sinister um, move on, on their part so i am saying there are three things now i have they have in mind one to uh, dr ronnie and steve blackett i'm saying it takes a man to walk away even if he is right it takes courage to walk away even if you are right and it takes humility to walk away even if you are right it, it is better to lose the battle and win the war 
do not major in the minors and what i'm saying to both of the gentlemen is that sometimes the more dust you kick up the more mess you make for yourself now this is to ralph thorne i admire the focus of the opposition leader if the captain of a ship in stormy seas is more concerned with passengers and cargo than steering the ship to safety chances are there won't even be passengers there won't even be cargo sometimes there won't even be a ship to captain and god forbid there would not even be a captain because he would indeed go down with the ship mm. and now what, what i have to say now is to the people don't ever fight for someone unless you have all the facts yeah very well Sometimes, said. One, one more minute it's going so good though but one more minute somebody wants yeah, to call it's, it's yes. okay sometimes sometimes we can't change our minds because of choice but sometimes our choices causes us to change our minds and that that is my thoughts for tonight wow i mean that is so deep but let me let me bring and uh, let me say mrs mrs corbin you're still there any comments specifically on what um um paul has just said a quick comment uh mrs corbin Rose Carbon, not there. Not hearing her. Apostle, um, is there any um do you have any thoughts on what um and what uh um Paul has just said? And while the there's a caller that's trying to call in, please call in now. Um yeah, no that Paul is finished. Go ahead, caller and call in. Go ahead, um Apostle. Yeah, I, I actually agree um with what uh, Mr. Paul just shared with us. Um, and I, I wanna add this that, you know, change is only necessary when change is necessary. And um, mm. right now we need change and, and change right now is necessary. Um, the reality is that what is taking place within the Democratic Labour Party is it's really not the Barbados Labour Party's business, okay? Um, this is uh in my opinion a matter of restructuring and um as uh, paul just said if you have an opportunity to state your case why would you not attend mm. and then ask people to fight for you that just does yeah. not make any sense at all i mean it's, it's crazy to expect the masses to fight for you when you are not even fighting for yourself so um mm. I think it's very important right now that the, the Democratic Labour Party, they, uh, they maintain their place. Uh, I, I know uh, for sure that this uh, act uh, by the executive body is a clear sign that the party is together. I mean, this is a unanimous decision. So this, this doesn't say that uh, the wranglings and all these different things. It's just a matter of the fact that the party knows if we're going to be um, you know, taken seriously by the public, uh, we have to rebuild. We have to rebuild better. We have to rebuild stronger. And to maintain this level of activity uh, within the party at this moment will not allow that to happen. So uh, again, uh, I mean, I love what Mr. Paul said and you know, I stand by what I've said so far. The time has come for, for you know, things to be done on a level that lifts Barbados and lifts Barbadians up out of what we've been experiencing for the last uh, six years. So, um, yeah. you know, the time has come for change. So, yes, let, um, let, 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 um, uh, um, Apostle, I'm going to cut you right there. Um, Paul, thank you so much for joining. And there is a. Uh, yeah, Someone yeah. else is on the line, um, sir. Um, this is Tyrone. Tyrone, um, go ahead and let's see if we can hear you. Yes, good night. Um, can you hear him? Yes, yes, yeah, go ahead. Can. Okay, yes, good night. I told you, I love your opposition, uh, Marcia Weeks, and 
everyone. Um, what's happening, Democrat? That party was supposed to happen every Saints because we have one strong voice for the people of Barbados. And was was transparent in the Democratic Party is positivity going to the party? Because I was always looking for someone, but I don't know what will happen in the near future. Ralph Thorne is a great gentleman to lead the Democratic Party, and also take Barbados forward because this is the era of the 40 poor people. This is, and trust me, the poor people will really get itself organized now and you know I can see a brighter future. Mm, so you, you believe you believe you, you like what you see um is happening in the DLP. You are not worried at all. Well I'm very happy and very very proud of what happened because I just say <laughs> when you have um bad race you gotta pick up the race and put it one side. Because not the food is the one we love prepared. Yes, yes, Sirodi. I love the an analogy. <laughs> well, well, well. Thank you, thank you so much. Are, let me ask you something. Are you uh, are you uh, a DLP member? Well, I'm a very strong Democratic Labour Party person, I, and also my mother Judy Jones. Mm -hmm. But are you guys members? Are you like? Are you going to be? Are yes, you going to be please, attending yes, please, the yes, annual please, conference? Yes. Yes, please. I have to go on Monday. Oh, so you guys are members, and so you're members, and you're saying you're happy um, about what has happened. Yes, I'm uh, very proud. I'm happy on my parents. Okay, I am one that proud. <laughs> I, I'm hearing the mom in the background. Okay, well, good, good for both of you, and and thanks for your your comments um and and um, bless you what would you want to to say to the other members of the dlp tonight well for the other uh, members of the democratic party it's ground raising everyone should come together for not only the party for barbados unite and uh, fight the enemy mm. okay we, we, we need transport tra uh, transmission of a positivity like over barriers yes 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 no, right there, it's... wonderful wonderful thank you so much for calling thank you god bless blessings and uh, god bless also yes thank you thank you god bless you. wow very very good there was another another call coming in um let me see if i can get this other person um to come in um let me see. Um, good night, caller. Good night. Good night. Can you speak up a little bit more? Uh, are you hearing me now? Yes. Uh, well, I'm hearing you. Are you guys? Are you hearing her, um, Apostle? Yes, I am. Okay, they're hearing yeah, you loud yeah. and clear. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Hello. While we're waiting on her, I see Judith and Clark. Judith, you're attending the uh, annual general conference, and um, and you are saying that you have been a member for thirty plus years. I would like to hear from Judith. Judith and call to one two four six. Two three six seven thousand. Judith Ann Clark is saying that she's been a member for thirty years. Um, Apostle. Wow, that's that's incredible. Yeah. Yes. Um, incredible. Yes. Oh, uh, Paul, thank you so much. I have you still. I'm so sorry. I have you hold you captive. Thank yeah. you for jo for it's, joining. It's okay. God bless. Thank you so much. Blessings on you. All right. Yes. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Good to see yes. you. Um. Um, let me see if um, Judith, you can use the number and call. Call in another three minutes or so, okay? Let me try this other. Let me try the caller again. I, I think you know, Apostle, it's good to hear from the people themselves. Good night, caller. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Okay. Good we're night. hearing you. Know. We're hearing you. Um, and I wanted to. We're we're asking the question. Um, is this a good move for the Democratic Labour Party? 
um, a lot of people, you know, on the radio, brass stacks and other persons, um, I heard Peter Wickham and all of them, they're saying that it's a bad move for the party, you know, and, and I, all we're decide we're, we're, we're thinking is a good move for the party, but I would like to hear your thoughts. So I think that this was an excellent move by the party. So based on the, the, the information that we have or that we've heard, I think that the two gentlemen would have gone ahead and disrespected the process in perpetuity. Mm. I don't think that it could have gone on. Like, when would it end? it's not for the good of the party so i believe that this is an excellent move let the healing continue let the critical work and the business of the people and for barbados continue because this this is a this is a really important juncture in mm -hmm. our lives in mm -hmm. barbados mm -hmm. and, and, and how important it is you think for barbados at this time it seems that I mean, we only have, you know, for so long, we had no one, no opposition, nobody in parliament. And we've been, you know, by operating on a de facto one party state. What, what are your thoughts um, uh, about that for Barbados? Uh, yeah, because uh, the word that, that sticks in my head is dictatorship. And <laughs> I think that the people are ready they may be silent. I think they're scared. They feel intimidated or something. But I think that there is this silent movement. They are ready for a change. If they know who it is that they're, you know, what's the option? Mm -hmm. What is the alternative? Let me see who the alternatives are. Mm -hmm. And they're ready. They're ready to vote. I, I believe they're ready to vote. They may not be, you know, they're not going to come out. They're not marching, you know, like 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there are, you know, I believe that the movement is there. They're ready for a change. They know what's going on. You can, you can, you know, shout and holler on, on brass stacks. Uh, there's nothing happening. You're just complaining. You complain too much, but they're feeling it. People know what's going on, mm -hmm. and they're ready for a change. They they just want Good to point. know who it is that we're voting for. Mm -hmm. What are the options? Show me the options. Let me go into the booth and do what I need to do. Yes, yes. And let me. I'm I'm asking everybody um, when they come on, and you you can free to answer or not to answer. But are you a member of the Democratic Labour Party? I am not a member of the Democratic Labour Party. I live in the diaspora, but I. I'm hoping that there are there are some kind of uh, there's some process that we can join the party and and attend meetings even if it's Zoom or whatever, and we have intentions of joining the party because this this is important. This is important. Yes. We've never seen we have never seen this type of dictatorship type of of of, of thing going on in Barbados. No. So yes. we, the, the, to answer the question, no, we are not, but we will be for yes. sure. You will. You are not members as yet, but you will become. You will be members of the D Democratic Labour Party. Well, it's great to hear, and this is somebody from the diaspora. Great to hear from you, ma'am. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow! Did you hear that, um, Apostle? That's incredible. That is mm. incredible. Yeah. Mm hmm. Another person from the diaspora saying, we want to vote. You all need to um, write to um, Mr. Thorne and let him start to advocate for that. Um, there's another call coming in. People actually seem like they prefer the telephone than to, to come into the studio. Good night. I see this is a Judy. Judy uh, I won't call the name. I'm not supposed to call names. Go ahead, please, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Good, good to night. hear you. What What are your thoughts? Yes, good to hear. Thanks for calling. Well, thank you for my name. I am a member and a proud member of the Democratic Labour Party. What the council did to Steve Blackett and Ronnie Edwards, they're right to do it. They had three calls to come to the meetings and there was, they didn't turn up. The right to um, expel them and Peter Wickham is for the BLP. Mm, mm. So you're saying not to people not to listen, not to listen to them, and you are a member. So are you going to be at the annual conference? Yes, I am. I have to be there. 
Mm, okay, wow. Because this this means okay. something to you. What well, what do you think about um Rob Thorne and the work that he's doing? He's an excellent gentleman, and I I am proud that he's leading the Democratic Labour Party because we need people like him in the party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. What do you want yeah, to okay. say to your he's other? Hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. He's a straightforward gentleman, and I love Mr. Tar with all my heart. He's a man to my heart. He comes out and tell you what he have to tell you, and I know that he's a man of God. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, what do you want to say to the other members of the Democratic Labour Party? We would have heard all the other pundits today, pundits today, saying that this is terrible. The party is going to be destroyed. Um, you know, all these, what do you want to say to those Democratic Labour Party members like yourself out there tonight? Right now, right now, this party is going to move on forward because two of them that in that was giving problems out and this party is going to move on um mr torn is the right gentleman as i said just now for this party and we need other people and the people that is um members if they're jews and paid up paid up go and make sure that their vote and vote out this vlp party okay wow well she advertising too <laughs> <laughs> well um ma'am ma'am thank you for calling it's great to hear you thank you for calling thank you and a pleasant good night to you all yes ma'am thanks thank you good night to you as well yes yes um any thoughts there um i, I i'm not hearing mrs corbin um but i did thoughts there miss um apostle well you know so far the the consensus from the callers that are coming in uh are actually in agreement that the move was uh necessary and uh i think even one caller said it should have been done as they said ever since so ever since. Uh, you're not getting that uh I, you only get it from the other side that it's a bad decision but you have to understand again um that when when you have when you have moderators on calling programs who make it clear the party their support. Uh, you're always going to get that group of bias, um, you know, rhetoric coming in, and that's what um, that's what you get from the the Peter Rickham show. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and you know, again, I I don't think this decision is a a matter for public opinion, mm -hmm. and neither do I think this decision is any of the Barbados Labour Party's business. Mm -hmm. And it, it sh they should not uh, take this and make this a matter of um, political gain or use it to create any kind of political leverage um, uh, with the people. This is a, a party's matter. And they have taken it upon themselves to act in accordance with their laws. And that's something that they should respect uh, and celebrate the fact that the Democratic Labour Party uh, is doing things within um, the the framework of the party's disciplinary committee. Um, so you know, I'm I'm actually happy hearing individuals uh, that are calling in as saying that it is an actually an actual really great move that uh, was made by the executive body of the party. So um, let's see where this goes. Like I said, I don't I don't see it becoming uh, anything destructive for the party. I can only see them getting up from this and building and coming back uh, better and coming back stronger. So uh, we'll see. You know, um, it, it's funny that I um, I spoke with only today and my husband was there as a witness. I mean, we spoke with um, a couple um, that is, they live in, I uh, can't remember which state in the U.S. that they live in maryland or somewhere like that and um you know what they are so excited about what happened they're here visiting <laughs> and wow. these are people that are ready to when it's time for election to come down to vote i spoke to another person um and this is a farmer and she's some she comes down and farmer yams and so on and then she goes back up and so on and she told me she said i love mr Thorne." 
and as soon as the election comes i just want they say election i tell you and i buy my ticket this is my best bay job i buy my ticket and i coming down to vote so when you listen to the radio when you listen to the brass tacks when you listen to the peter wickham shows and the the, the charles morris and all of them you wonder yeah. really are, are they really 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 about what is truth is that really the sentiment on the ground you you really have to wonder you know i'm apostle yeah i'm not hearing that i'm not hearing that this is going to be just you know destructive to the party uh, and, and i've even spoken to uh individuals and um uh you know in my circle about this and um they're not sensing no type of destructive element at all i think what is happening right now uh, i'll go on a limb and say this i know for a fact that the uh the barbers of the party right now is struggling um i know that they they are aware that the democratic labor party is stronger under mr thorne and um you know it's only a matter of time before we actually see um the unraveling let me put it that way uh, there is the unraveling uh of the barbers labor party going forward but uh, this is going to be an amazing time. I think that um, with all that I have witnessed so far, uh, this is an amazing time to to rebuild, uh, an amazing time for uh, the the Democratic Labour Party to make sure that the, the public uh, in Barbados, they know for sure what they are bringing to the table. Um, I, I know there are a lot of individuals that are already behind Mr. Thorne, and um, I think this is just time for the the wing of the eagle to be healed and uh, to begin to soar again. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you know an amazing uh, time of um, restoration, uh, an amazing time of rebuilding, reconstruction, um, and then uh, again for the party to reclaim. Uh, their place in the minds of Barbadians. So I, I'm, I'm very, very uh, happy uh, to uh, to see this act. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just laughing all the way. I'm very, very, very excited uh, because it's time for uh, Barbadians to see something different, time for Barbadians to see something new. And I think they're going to see this with the resurgence of the uh, Barbados Liberal Party. I think uh, by the time they actually do have this uh, general conference, I think the the energy um, is going to be there. I think uh, Barbados are, are going to see uh, a, a new surge of energy, kind of similar to what we're seeing in America with uh, Kamala Harris. I think we're going to see something similar like that um, with the, uh, the people of Barbados and within the Democratic Labour Party. And, uh, you know, I just want to be clear, brass tops is just, well, it's just brass tops. You know, you can use them for a few days and then afterwards they bend, get old and get rusty. You got to look for new ones. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, you know. Yeah. Um, as I told Mr. Thorne, you know, uh, uh, I said to him when we have the, the meeting, I told him that there are, there are people that are praying for him that he does not really know about. And the, the reality is that he has to have very, very strong people around him, um, you know, in order to make this work. And the people are slowly but surely uh, making their way there and taking their place. And, you know, the, the bricks and mortars are being laid. And uh, sooner or later, you'll see what's been constructed. You know, um, I've, I've always said this, that uh, in the Bible, uh, when you read Genesis chapter 1, uh, the Bible tells us that everything was created in the dark. There was no light. It's, it's only after God said, let there be light, that we saw what was created. So uh, just in a few uh, seasons to come, we will see when the light shows up, what's being created in the dark. And, um, you know, from my understanding, no picture is developed in the light. You must mm -hmm. develop it in a dark room. And right now, the uh, the... Democratic Labour Party is doing their work to develop that uh, picture that the public will eventually see. So 
let's give them a chance to do what's necessary, Bill, and not be hounding them and, and you know, taking this seriously and, and acting funny and trying to disrespect Mr. Thorne and the Democratic Labour Party. It has a rich history. Uh, we know who founded it. We know what he did. And, um, you know, strangely enough, when I was speaking with my cousin, uh, Dr. Waldo Ramsey, he told me, he said, um, he said, young Scanderbury, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Um, he said, Arrow Barrow never wanted free education. He said, Arrow Barrow wanted freedom through education. Okay, that's a big difference. Free education versus freedom through education. Okay, and what we've done is that we've taken what he wanted, which mm -hmm. was the people being free through the use of education and use it as a political edge. And we're talking about free education, but they can never be free education. Teachers must be paid, uh, schools must be built, uh, Ministry of Education uh, and must, must operate. Uh, you know, books must be purchased, uh, staff must be paid, um, you know, so telling children that you can ride free on the bus is not educating our children. Okay, so, um, you know, just a few things that I, I just want to add to this, but we're going to see that picture that the Democratic Labour Party is currently, um, you know, working on in their dark room, and uh, we will see the light of it shortly. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, um, you know, great. I think this is great encouragement because, uh, you know, what people have to understand, um, Apostle Scantabury, is that the the media in Barbados, the media, we must understand this, and 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 regardless of what we think of the, um, the DLP or the UPP or the APP or solutions uh, and so on, remember that they have the the media in in their in their pocket. Then they they got the media, yeah. the, all of them, all of them, and it's very rare because I've had to deal with the media, and it's very rare that um you know you're going to get people in there that will will want to do something a little different you know and and you see it even at election time you were, were part of a third party and you yes, you, you realize it, they give no they they give no um no 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 um airtime to to who no. they don't the people they don't want to give airtime to they don't get airtime no. you know basically yeah. well I'll, I'll tell you if it wasn't for uh loop news and you know, certain elements uh, of other uh, versions of media here in Barbados would not have uh, a platform to say anything on. And mm -hmm. uh, again, one of my big problems in Barbados is that we don't have any investigative journalism. Um, you know, so what we have is a sham. And again, uh, we're talking about Barbados being a world-class country. Explain to me, how can world-class be one television station, two uh newspapers uh, uh explain to me how you can have you know just uh three main media houses uh two uh telecommunication providers one um electric uh power provider explain to me how can that be world class okay i i would actually like to say what it is but it definitely isn't world class and what we need in our our media because uh, again, this is making sure that the public out there, they're not aware of the alternatives. And as I said, um, I never uh, had the, the NBKA, the New Barbados Kingdom Alliance, as a third party. I said we are an alternative party. That's true. Um, a okay. Correction. I stand corrected, yeah. sir. Right. Um, because we wanted to present uh, to the people of Barbados an alternative to what they've been going back and forth to. And um, again, I think it's, it's uh, pretty important now, uh, especially leading up to this next general election, it's going to be very, very uh, interesting to see how things are going to unfold. But I, I think, again, um, the, the Democratic Labour Party right now, they have, that, they have that push. They have that opportunity to really sway uh, the minds of the people, uh, the young people, I think people out there, they want something, they need something new. 
And I can tell you for sure the people in Six Mints uh, here in St. Peter, they definitely need something. Um, they need something to happen um, that would put them in a better position right now. So, uh, you know, kudos to this decision um, by the uh, Democratic Labour Party, and uh, they they can only get better from here on. This this is what I'm saying, and and it's 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 not um, even a matter of me using my spiritual gifts, okay? Um, and I think it's very very important. So uh, we'll go forward from here. I think they're going to do very well. I think so too. And when you think when you think, Apostle, that it was a uh, a unanimous decision based on my research, and as I said, my number is two three six seven thousand. If what I'm saying is not truthful, um, feel free to call me and and um, and correct me and give me the give me evidence. All right. Yep. But based on my research, um, Apostle, to, yes. um, my, th that it was a uh, it was a unanimous decision overwhelmingly yes, unanimous this is of the general council the highest decision making arm of yes, the yes. party so what yes. are you fighting yes. what is it that are, what are you fighting what are you doing you know more yes. than you have said um you know they are they, they have said that if they do not uh if they're not reinstated they're going to destroy the party and how uh, how that means did was were you really were uh, uh, if you really love something? Well, you know, uh, I think what is what they're dealing with is the shock. Okay, um, and you know, people don't necessarily deal with shock uh, the same way, and it's very very clear from the reaction and the behavior, and then the. Uh, response uh, from these two gentlemen is that they, they, they haven't handled the shock of this decision uh, maturely, okay? And they have not particularly handled this decision as maturely as they should have. And I think that's where the public should uh, base uh, much of their understanding of this situation. The, the maturity that was necessary from them in terms of dealing with this situation, it just was not there, okay? And if you're going to present yourself as a leader, then there is a need for a certain level of maturity. And it, Correct. That level, we did not see that level of maturity coming from them. Not that they're not, uh, you know, reputable gentlemen, not that they haven't done anything in the nation or for the nation. Sure, they have, but this comes down to the reality of maturity, okay? This comes down to, we have laws, we have a, an executive body, we have a disciplinary committee, we have, you know, uh, floor membership, we understand that there is a way that the party functions, and you made a decision to just blatantly not function within the confines of this. And um, again, what we're dealing with here is not miscommunication. It is not uh, a matter of Mr. Thorne being a dictator. It is not a matter of hatred. It is simply a matter of maturity. It's simply a matter of handling a situation that uh, was fickle, uh, a very delicate situation, and it had to be handled delicately, but it got to the point where the operation, the activity had to be swift and it had to be shocking. Now, I'm going to say this because I am, uh, uh, you know, of course, you bring a preacher on a show like this. The Bible is <laughs> going to come up at some point in time. I can tell you yes, that. Yes, and that's fine they because we, 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 have, we have another six minutes. So that's yes, fine. Right. I'll say this quickly. Um, we had a situation with uh, Cora Dathan and Abiram who came up and spoke against the man of God, Moses. And Moses said, listen, I'm, I'm not going to get around here dealing with all this disrespect from you. Uh, he said to the people, you all come close. If you're with them, you go over with them. If you're with me, you come with me. And he said, being a man of God, he said, the earth opened up, spoke the word of God. The earth opened up, swallowed 250 of them that were over with Cora, Dathan, and Byram and slammed close. It was the fastest funeral in history, the fastest mass funeral in history. And... This is where, ladies and gentlemen, um, 
the many times decisions must be made and they must be made in a shocking manner okay uh we go back we look at ananias and sapphira for god's sake we had to make a tough decision on that we can't let the church go forward with people we just started we mm. can't have folk coming in um trying to rob and trying to lie at the same time so we had uh the the first funerals in early church very shocking okay and the bible said fear came on everybody so um i think what they uh have to deal with is the fact that they did not demonstrate a very high level of maturity in this matter and they have to deal with the shock of the decision that was made by the executive uh body of the party uh and they just have to handle it and uh demonstrate that they're men of um repute and uh you know move on but uh that's the reality of what's happening right now yeah cor correct and and to all who are saying that all hell is going to break loose and so on now Oh, no, no, and oh, no. um, then no, oh, no. All we're, hell, we're, uh, no, we're praying for Mr. Thorne. Ain't no hell breaking loose. Um, the hell just got evicted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that too, you know. I, so. I'd say that. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they will let loose on themselves, you know. Yeah, but, uh, um, we're, no, we're not, we're not going to do that. I think, um, Mr. Thorne, as I said to him, he's backed by very strong spiritual people and uh you know and uh we're, we're praying for him uh that he would continue to function in the the wisdom of god and, and function in righteousness and justice when i spoke to him i said i keep hearing you use these words over and over uh you know righteousness and justice and uh, those are words that I, I i like those are words that i use and uh so we're praying for him and uh you know praying that the the will of god and and the wisdom of god would be demonstrated in his life on a daily basis and so this this is an act let me just say this this is an act of wisdom and wisdom is justified of her deeds and the deeds of their of, of her children uh, i don't think that they can i don't think they can fight wisdom you can never fight wisdom and win never never and i i i want to say with some of these threats um apostle that is coming out um um from this camp and um one of these gentlemen on here actually um threatening in a very very awful way um people in the party uh, it's happening and this is the kind of people that they want and i'm speaking and nobody told me to say this but i'm saying it because because when you hear what is happening and what they're they're talking about what they're planning to do i hear that um one of them is going on some um, um media thing um overseas and all of that please sit down sit yes, down and stop writing threats stop writing uh, threats to people because nobody's yes. listening and nobody it's like the man that comes and says oh here's a stick up it's a stick up and and, and people are like please and go sit down go you know, sit down you know, the bible is is clear on that when i became a man i put i i put away childish things and uh evidently since we're seeing so much childish behavior at this point then it leads us to consider that there is a a level of maturity that has not been um accepted or as yet uh attained uh by these gentlemen so um again we're praying with mr thorne we're praying with the Democratic Labour Party. I'm not saying this because of, um, you know, being, uh, you know, a Democratic Labour Party person or anything of that nature. But I know when justice has to be served. I know when my country is in danger. I know right now for sure that Barbados is in danger under the type of leadership that we have at the moment. And, um, you know, I am in favor of any uh, element that uh that arises that is divine in nature that says we need to do something right now to get our nation back to put our nation on a solid footing and to move forward with the will of god so that every person in barbados can prosper and live well and do well in their own country yes and that and with that we 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 will 
um we will stop and somebody says here first corinthians 14 14 said let all things be done in decency and order and that is mr thorn and that is what you hear well, you hear from him all the time um, talking about the process you you never hear him out there um you know spilling the beans and all of that he tries and and, and i must commend this um general counsel because you did not hear a peep out of any anybody it you know you know somebody was born but nobody <laughs> they don't go to the media and that's right. how you know you know i mean it was done it but in in the in the right way i really admire that and i admire the disciplinary committee as well led by um apostle david durant a man of integrity um i really admire that and 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 i want to say those of you who know to pray continue to pray don't fight it in the natural because right. as long as we our 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 aim is that we should never have a one party government a one party a single party government never whether you go, whether it is you're going to decide you're going to vote for solutions barbados you want to vote for um um what's the other one i don't know if it's upp or app at this time UPP, I, yeah. UPP, yep. I don't know what it is. You want to vote for the Democratic Labor Party, whatever you want to vote for, but there should not be no one single party in Barbados. No, there should not be. Amen. <laughs> All right, Dave, take it away. <laughs> uh, Dave, um, let's play our closing. The, the closing um uh, they want to play mr thorne i think they probably will appreciate that and then that's one <laughs> we're not playing any other songs no other songs okay just days down. after I former government backbencher Ralph Thorne crossed the floor, Don't he's taken the oath of office well, as leader of the opposition. And more will be left over. Are these trips so important? My mo yes, I'm for real, remember? I am for real. Don't let me talk about your business. Don't let me talk about your business. All right. Has to be some order here. The Minister of Finance is not party to this present transaction, Your Honor. Ask him to keep quiet, please. And I say to you, further, Mr. Speaker, that my conscience, my location here, is related to my conscience. I said it last year. It is well with my soul. So whether he cross or in cross, he will always be there for us. I came to a point where I had to take the decision that if my philosophical and political views do not accord with those of government in terms of its legislation, in terms of its policy, the relationship becomes untenable.
All right. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. You stayed so long with me. Um, thank, right. thank you so, you so, so much. very much. <laughs> um, God bless you. Thank you so much. Yes, and you. We, we hope you can join us again soon. You were just here the other day. You're back again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Let's ma hope you can so join again. again. Thank okay. you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye.